subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates hello friends this is vijay bambani here and in this video i'm going to address a concern which i'm sure must be a, a top of the mind recall of most traders and investors why are base metals which is industrial metal prices falling and what do we do now about our stocks which are concerning base metals <coughs> aluminium steel iron ore copper shares and um, uh, allied industries may i draw your attention uh, to the snap uh, the, the market uh, screenshot that you're seeing on your screen as i record this video on 28th of october i want to bring to your attention the market watch of 27th and 26th of october 2021 do note how sharply industrial or base metals have declined in the uh, mcx exchange floor and now multiply the market lot say of aluminium if you are a reserve member of equity master and or somebody who attended the equity master uh, conference of january 2021 i would strongly suggest you do even if you are not a member you do attend this conference i shared with you a very simple anecdote of how i uh, discern metal prices far away from uh, research reports far away from what is uh, uh, being discussed in the mainstream or social media i'll come to that later but let me draw your attention to the videos that i have recorded in the past on the metals super cycle as the market calls it on 5th of march i recorded a video which all these videos are available in the playlist if you just bother to scroll down in this playlist now on 5th of march a video titled a new super cycle in metals question mark 26th may 2021 is the commodity super cycle real question mark 16th june shadow inventories in the commodity markets and 7th july is the metals bull market over question mark now these four videos along with others uh, that i have recorded dealt specifically with what is happening to metals prices i have admitted in these videos that the bull market in metals is for real which means the prices are going up now the reasons are a lot of unbacked currency sloshing around in the market waiting to get invested somewhere so it can earn profits number 2 covid based restrictions which is resulting in supply disruptions number 3 labor strife in many of these mining companies if you are connected with me on social media you would have heard or read my rants on what's happening in latin america now most people don't understand why this guy called vijay bambani is going on and on and on about latin america middle east north africa parts of southeast asia and parts of asia pacific now let's take latin america if you were to know your metals you would instantly realize that majority of uh, latin american countries are also resource rich economies they basically export metals what happens and they are financially distressed they are uh, under huge amounts of debt with international uh, uh, financial institutions what happens when you are a exporter of metals and your economy is under distress you sell what you have what god gives you in terms of natural resources to export your way out of trouble this is an element that many analysts forget they tend to extrapolate that if prices went up 10% in one month in 60 in 6 months from now they'll be up 60% in 10 months from now they'll be up 100% linear extrapolation is a fallacy in statistics and definitely a fallacy in financial markets it's a it's a grave risk that you are posing just because you've seen some amount of rally or decline and then you say one year from now based on this number this is where the prices should be a certain cause of a death of a trader secondly in the video that i made on 16th june shadow inventory in commodity markets 
This will address the issue of why LME uh, uh, stocks are falling in terms of copper, nickel, lead, zinc, aluminium, etc. WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get is a myth in financial markets, which is why you should basically be listening to the traders. Traders, I don't mean commodity traders or stock traders. I mean people who actually deal in commodities. Now, let me quote the anecdote which I shared with uh, uh, Equity Masters uh, conference uh, uh, participants. In 2018, Donald Trump imposed sanctions on a company called Rusal. It's Russia's aluminium manufacturing and exporting company. And it is responsible between uh, uh, 6 to 8 percent of the global supply of aluminium. The markets thought aluminium was running out of this world and they started marking prices higher and higher. And to my horror, I'll not name names, but CEOs of companies came out and started saying aluminium will go to 225, 250, 300 rupees a kilo. I decided to investigate and I went to places like Darukhana, Masjid Bandar, Reti Bandar and uh, uh, other areas in Mumbai. Now, Darukhana does not mean a wine shop or an area where alcohol is made. This is very simply Asia's biggest scrap metals market. What you basically do if you're a trader in Darukhana is you sit outside a ramshackle, huge go down and you buy scrap metal, shavings, filings, bits and pieces, edges, corners, strips, everything. You basically buy this scrap, melt it, make it into virgin metal, sell it at a profit. I decided to go out there and start asking my contacts in Daru Khana, Masjid Bandar and Dana Bandar as to whether they were buying scrap metals, especially aluminium at those fantastic prices. You know what? All of them, almost all of them told me it would be suicidal to buy scrap at that price spend more money on it to melt it and convert it to bars, ingots, sheets, whatever, and sell it in the market. And this time around, do understand that fuel prices are significantly higher. So smelting and melting costs are much, much more higher. This time again, I've been in touch with those guys and they've been telling me what I think I knew. They were not buying metals at those prices, fantastic prices in the scrap market. So one reason why metals were expected to come down was the people who actually deal in those metals knew something was wrong and they were not buying at those prices. Latin America flooding uh, uh, the markets with metals out of sheer distress to pay their way out of debt is another factor. Now, why are stocks like Indalco, Tata Steel, uh, Sale, Nalco, uh, uh, Jindal Steel, etc., etc., falling? Hey. They mirror the price of the commodity. Now, this is where there is a lose correlation. Why do I say lose? Because this is where the difference between equities and commodities step in. In commodity markets, both demand and supply are almost infinite. So you dig deeper into Mother Earth and you extract some more commodity. But in equities, demand and supply is not linear. The paid up capital of a company is static. You can stimulate demand by screaming buy across all media houses and entice people to buy stocks. So stocks can continue to rise even though the economy might be not doing great, which is called counter cyclicality in economic theory. All right. So stock markets have been basically going against the grain. And what you are seeing in terms of metal stocks is gravity playing its part. Is the metal bull market over? I don't think so. Maybe there will be a good enough correction and then money will start to flowing. And hey, you can't fight the uh, inflow of money. You can't fight the flood of money. I don't know where the money will come in hereafter as I record this video on 28th October. But metal prices I can assure you are not in a super cycle. That is a theory concocted by people who have no exposure to metals themselves. All right, because the traders who run their houses by buying this scrap metal, melting it and selling it back again are not buying at these stupendous prices.
This is not happening, which is why you are facing extreme amount of volatility in your portfolio of cyclicals. Cyclicals would mean metals and other companies associated with metals. So even if I even if you are not trading commodities, even if you are not bothered at all about commodities, please do not ignore the prices of aluminium, nickel, lead, zinc and copper for the simple reason that your portfolio of stocks dealing in those metals, their prices depend on the underlying asset, the raw material, which is commodities. And I keep telling people who are who care to listen to me that we traders are brain warriors. We fight our battles with our ideas, not with uh, fast internet connections and uh, uh, higher refresh rate of a mobile uh, trading terminal or a desktop trading terminal and uh, uh, higher leverage offered by brokers. We win and lose with our ideas. So be particularly careful about whose ideas you're allowing to impact your mind. If you want to listen to the guys who are actually dealing in the scrap metals, they don't seem to be as gung ho as uh, uh, people in uh, uh, the public domain seem to be. And this explains to you why you need to be extra, extra cautious. Keep your stop losses diligently and not take this market for granted. It's not a one way ticket. It's not a one way uh, a rally. And I do admit it's a bull market where prices will go up and come down. But super cycle, I don't believe in it. I have given you enough dates starting from 1st March 2021 where I've been saying it's a mere bull, bull market and not a super cycle. In a super cycle, people will gladly buy at whatever prices they are told to buy. This is not happening at Darukhana, Masjid Bandar and Dana Bandar. This is Asia's biggest scrap market and it's telling you stop. So this is something that should be telling you what's happening to your portfolio of metal stocks. Let's be careful out there. I'm not calling it the end of the world. I'm not calling it an end of a bull market, but you definitely need to pay attention. Keep your ears to the ground and hear the signals of the horses approaching your battlefield. On this guarded note, I bid goodbye to you, not before reminding you to click like on this video if you agree with what you saw. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here. Good, bad or ugly, I love to hear from you in the comment section and help me reach out to fellow like-minded investors and traders by referring my video to your family and friends. On this note i bid goodbye to you thank you for your patience have a very very profitable day this is vijay bambani signing off for now see you again in my next very soon bye bye